Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. We're here at the new Wikibon studio in Marlboro, Mass., inside the Cube. We're here with Craig Nunez and Sean Kinney of HP. Guys, welcome. Yeah, thanks, The very Dave. thin thanks Craig Nunez. You're looking great. You thanks. Know? Yeah. Thin provisioning. Yeah, that's thin, right. Thin you know, guarantee. Working that's out. Right. That's Get good. Thin. He lives it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, marketing all the way. Right, right on. And, uh, so Live we're here it. to talk about the new HP announcement, the August 23rd uh, announcement. You guys have been busy. It feels like we were just at HP Discover. Yeah. Just yesterday, I mean, just the, the great event. You guys have recovered from that for the most part. And uh, we had the cube there, of course. Yeah, right on into the so, next thing. So yeah. the summer has always been a big time for uh, mm -hmm. three-par announcements. You've kind of right. been on that cycle, and here we are again. Yeah. Now, Sean, you uh, have a v variety of background. Uh, you joined yes. HP relatively recently, right? Yep, and, over uh, a year ago. Yep. Just the head so, of the three-par guys. So, well, anyway, welcome, guys. Appreciate Thank you guys you. coming on here. So uh, why don't we start off, Craig? Tell us a little bit about what was announced today, and then we can d dig into it a little bit. Sure, yeah. We, um, so we announced a, a, a couple of things. One is uh, kind of building on what we talked about in June. We introduced our converged storage architecture. And what we talked about converged storage is really being storage without boundaries and kind of driving storage much more closely to your applications and, and you know breaking down the boundaries between server storage and networking. Um, we're kind of taking that to the next level today in announcing peer-based storage federation for HP storage. And, and what that is really doing is, you know, again, delivering on that storage without boundaries theme and really allowing our customers to, um, you know, uh, turn on data and keep that, you know, up and running wherever it might land, wherever they might need it to be. Um, Peer-based storage federation, one big uh, part of our announcement. The other big part is a, um, a platform extension to our th HP 3PAR family uh, called the uh, uh, P10,000 V-Class. The uh, uh, HP V-Class, 3PAR uh, V-Class is a, um, uh, a platform that delivers new scalability for your virtual machines. It delivers uh, 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 really untouchable efficiency in terms of uh, um, uh, some of the new enhancements we've driven into silicon and software. Uh, and we kind of view it with, uh, with the, the uh, peer-based federation capability and everything that the platform has brought to bear over the last several years, the benchmark for federated tier one storage for, for cloud and virtual data centers. So Sean, we were talking off camera about uh, thin provisioning, you know, now, yeah. so you were not a, uh, a three-part classic, right? You weren't part of the no. part of the acquisition team, but so now thin provisioning is now part of the portfolio and, and you see a lot of companies have announced thin provisioning. What's as, as a quasi outsider to the th three-part, what does what is thin provisioning meant to the insider at HP? and? Talk a little bit about you know the thin provisioning and why you, your contention was it's different than yeah, all it, the other uh, stuff out there. So talk sure, a little bit about that. It's really core to the three part value proposition because it's built into the architecture. And as Craig was saying, we're now in our fourth generation ASIC, which includes you know the three part buzzword thin built in. And that's the difference is that it is built in. It is native to the architecture versus where it's bolted on and you know sometimes called a feature. Well, my guess is it's not always that well used. Now, three par, almost every customer uses it because that's kind of why they bought it. And we guarantee that, hey, give us a chance, we'll guarantee you're going to save at least 50% in your storage, or we'll actually buy the rest. That's a little bit conservative to us. We usually do better. But where it's a bolt on to check the box on an RFI, it's probably not being used. And I'd question whether all the other arrays and their customers are getting anywhere close to the benefits the three par does. Yeah, we've quantified some of that on <clears throat> on Wikibon. I mean if you if you you know search three par on Wikibon, we, we actually did a customer survey mm -hmm. uh, where we we actually pulled data not it was only metadata it was no customer data out of the arrays and did David Floyer did a detailed analysis and um, it was pretty impressive yeah. no, no doubt about yeah. it. you guys pioneered that whole space mm -hmm. so now you're getting into this whole federated storage mm -hmm. area um, talk about what you mean by federated storage sure. and then we'll talk yeah. about what's different about what you guys are doing yeah so here's here's kind of the the background we've come a long way in highly virtualized storage platforms. There's, um, you know, the benefits that one can realize on a highly virtualized storage platform from, um, uh, you know, tiering and um, uh, ease management, et cetera, very clear, right? 
But what uh, our customers still uh, struggle with is in this new data center um, where you have, um, you know, you're deploying large-scale virtualization, you're deploying your cl cloud-based architectures, you uh, run into a couple of different situations. One is that data center is very unpredictable in its workloads, right? You've got a lot of diverse and changing workloads. And so part of uh, what we hear from our customers is, you know, I, I sometimes find I've got a workload, you know, trapped on a set of resources, and, and I'd really like to get it to, you know, a set of available resources elsewhere in my data center, maybe even in another data center, but I can't take the downtime to do that. Um, the, other, the other thing that we find is when it comes time to take advantage of uh, storage uh, technology refresh, uh, lifecycle asset management for storage, um, again, in a uh, cloud data center, a virtual data center, we've got many, many applications consolidated. That, the ability to, to um, uh, you know, take your multiple applications down, your multiple tenants down, and, and do that refresh, very painful, very difficult uh, exercise. Um, and then the, the final thing, and it kind of builds on the point you guys were talking about with thin provisioning, we have loads of thin provisioning customers. And they, what they uh, see as an opportunity is, you know, they've gotten, you know, thin and high uh, utilization results from thin provisioning. They actually see an opportunity whereby they can kind of share uh, free capacity resources across their data center with, you know, technologies that go beyond in the box virtualization, and and that's squarely where we're aiming, Storage Federation. Okay, so it's a, a, a collection of independent arrays that you're actually managing as one. You call that, I think, peer to peer, peer to peer. Right. Right. Yeah. So so uh, I would I would describe Storage Federation as the following: it is um, uh, distributed volume management across you know peer based storage systems, a, a federation, um, really. Uh, uh, interacting in kind of native in-band communications between them. They, they're relying on no external devices to actually, you know, do any of the, you know, functionality we're talking about versus virtualization. Think of virtualization as sort of a hierarchical technology, a, 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 a SAN-based virtualization appliance uh, virtualizing arrays beneath it or uh, within a storage array a storage controller virtualizing disks beneath it. Uh, what we're talking about is a, is a peer-based technology and, and what the advantage that brings you is you don't have you know, an additional layer of equipment, an additional management point, an additional failure point uh, in your architecture. Keep it simple, keep it more efficient, et cetera. Okay, and, and the, you talk a little bit about the use cases and the problems that it's, that it's solving. It's not heterogeneous. Right. Right. We're not talking about an appliance that goes in and manages other storage, right? That's right. Um, so, what problem does it solve? Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, and and well, I mean, I think uh, Sean's got it got a great uh, take on this. But at the end of the day, what we're what we're aiming at is solving the problems in of of unpredictability in your cloud based architectures and really tackling that. Uh, for our customers in, in a better way than anyone's ever been able to do before. So Sean, when you talk about cloud-based architectures, that's yeah. a term that you used previously. Um, what are we talking about? Are we talking about private clouds? Are we talking about uh, cloud service providers? C, all of the above. Yeah. So cloud service providers, they're some of three parts, biggest, best customers. But corporate IT is moving that way too. And they're saying, hey, I like the flexibility because yeah, I have a data center with unpredictable workloads. I need an array or I need an architecture with sort of multi-tenancy built in, again, not bolted on. And so taking that as a model, they're saying, but I don't want to outsource either because it's too much risk or lack of control or my CIO doesn't want the data to leave the building. So they're moving towards this private cloud model. And the good thing is the service providers are leading the way and now corporate IT is following and they don't have to go through, it's not nearly as risky as it used to be because other companies have built successful businesses on it and on 3PAR. Is that gap closing, in your opinion, between the, the cloud service providers and the internal IT, or are the cloud service providers <laughs> going so fast because there's so much demand that they're actually innovating even, even faster? I think they're innovating IT. on a business model mm -hmm. perspective, mm -hmm. on a technology. I'd say that the uh, well, corporate IT is catching up. The big one, the biggest difference for me is still chargeback. Yeah. yeah. 
That's their business on the cloud service. Yeah, we buyers. figure maybe 15% of the people out there are doing chargebacks. That's yeah. feel about it's right. As good so, as good as any. So, you know, if you're not doing chargebacks, is your private cloud really a, a cloud? Well, by the technical definition, I guess not. But I, I, I think more and more people are going to start doing that because yeah. people are going to want to see that visibility. The other thing is we're making it easier. Yeah. Right. It's the technology has supports the business, also has to enable the business. And now with Federation and Peer Motion, as you can add more storage, and as part of the software suite within 3PAR, to be able to automatically rebalance the system and put the right resources you know, at the right price at the right time, not only within the array, but across arrays. Now, a lot of that human management in the game of mm -hmm. who's got the best spreadsheet, it's gone. The intelligence <laughs> is in the array. <laughs> we love managing by spreadsheet. And then so the V class, Craig, is another arrow in the quiver of the three-part portfolio, right? That's so right. Talk yeah. a little bit about the V yeah. class and maybe the... Yeah, the, so the, the details there. You know, if you if you step back on what folks are after in this in this new data center, um, they're trying to handle you know kind of this unpredictable multi-tenancy, right? Handling all those mixed workloads and changing workloads. They are, you know, trying to deal with uh, security and, and quality of service. They're trying to you know maintain kind of um, uh, persistent access to to data that's maybe moving a around their environment. They um, you know, are thinking about pay-as-you-grow models and keeping capacity utilization at, at an, uh, as high as absolutely possible. Um, and you know, they're driving on self-configuring, self-provisioning, um, self-tiering systems to, to kind of keep the operational side down. So, so you've got a, you know, a, a set of criteria that, that frankly, is showing the the cracks in the architectures uh, of you know 20 years ago that um, you know we we've kind of been been working towards and with the the new V class it's our latest extension to the family that's really built on that and what uh, we we kind of view the V class as sort of a a, um, a a benchmark for folks we're trying to deliver mission critical. Uh, uh, storage capabilities uh, in this new data center. The V class extends the um, the lineup about 50% uh, uh, higher in terms of overall connectivity and uh, to uh, to I/O and disk. It um, supports some workloads uh, uh, as much as three times faster. Um, from a, uh, a virtual machine perspective, it, it really drives up the scalability of uh, VMs in your environment, and it does all of that with a whole new level of efficiency really built into that, that Gen 4 ASIC. You get you know, fat to thin conversion faster, you get a more granular uh, reclamation capability, even your remote copy or DR uh, capability uh, between arrays gets um, uh, zero detection, gets a, a thin uh, um, uh, capability to it beyond the thin aware capability built into it before. To build on that, you know, it was more granular uh, around thin provisioning. We used to do it at 128 megabyte block sizes. Right. It's now 16K. Hmm. So whatever that math is, it's 10,000 times more efficient or what have you. So it, uh, you know, we're really sucking out all the extra unused stranded space and then giving it back to uh, the general storage pool. Thin. So, very, um, very thin. Well, who does who, the Can three? I say anorexic? The, 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 yeah, bad? anorexic. Yeah, <laughs> the th three-part platform. What's the primary competitor that you see in the marketplace when you go sell three? -part? I would say traditional thinking. Yeah. I would say the approach of application servers and storage and basically silos within mm -hmm. the environment. Mm -hmm. As opposed to an infrastructure that's going to support multiple applications. Yeah. That if you have stuff. predictable workloads, you can buy predictable storage. If you have unpredictable workloads, you need multi-tenant, architected from the ground up storage. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. three-part. Yeah. And so yeah. it's that shift. So. Now, I know you've got some uh, uh, announcements, left-hand announcements coming up. We're not going to talk about that today. But I wanted to ask you where EVA fits. A lot of people sure. in the Wikibon community have asked us questions about EVA. What's the roadmap look like? Can you talk a little bit about EVA, where the fit is, and what you're doing there? Yeah, absolutely. And we, back in June at HP Discover, we announced uh, we're now shipping our fifth generation EVA platform. We have a, over 100,000 units installed in the field. For customers that like EVA, love EVA, we're going to continue to invest in it. We're going to continue to make it better. And we've added thin provisioning. Uh, we're going to continue. You'll see more investments and announcements coming from us uh, really in the fall of this year and then into 2012. EVA is not going away anytime soon. We have a loyal customer base. 
it's still, according to third party uh, analysts, 20% easier to use than other traditional mid tier architectures. And it's a successful business for us with loyal customers. Of course, right. we're not going to walk away from it. Good. Um, so, Craig, you miss being a $200 million public company? I mean, how's, how's, how's it feel to be part, back part of HP? I mean, how, how's it going? Uh, no, to your first <laughs> question. Um, look, so, uh, so three par at um, HP. Um, what H, what three par has done for HP, uh, I think, is hopefully pretty visible. Three par uh, as a uh, is an anchor storage platform. It is a, uh, a basis for our uh, path to the cloud and cloud system. It is a part of our. Uh, virtualization, um, our best of breed virtualization stack and virtual system. Um, it is a part of our, you know, mission critical m metro and, and continental cluster offerings. It's it's very rapidly become kind of a, a fixture across the business. Um, what uh, what HP has done for three par is is give it the uh, the uh, avenue to really, you know, um, uh, grow and you know touch far more customers than a, than a $200 million company was able to do. You know, thousands and thousands of channel partners, uh, thousands and thousands of salespeople, uh, all making, uh, you know, all making calls with 3PAR and having, you know, having a conversation that, to be honest, um, is, a, is a conversation, especially for, you know, our, our EVA customers, feels like a, a big brother. It's, uh, you know, it's a, uh, a, a virtualized platform with a, with a lot of great ease of use benefits and feels like, you know, a, a, a perfect fit in the family. So from that perspective, the growth we're seeing, you know, is no surprise at all to any of us. So. Yeah, that was a big, obviously a huge acquisition. You know, we we covered it very closely. We we're very high on it. We've all we've I've said a zillion times it's a better use of cash, uh, many times in R and D is a, acquiring a successful company. So, um, well, good luck with that. We're going to be at VMworld. We're going to have you guys on. I nice. hope we can yeah. we can do more uh, discussion around federation. Sure. Maybe dig yeah. into it a little yeah. a little deeper. That would be great. So. Uh, that's coming up uh, very shortly here, so uh, we'll see you in uh, in Vegas, back in Vegas. <laughs> and, uh, well, so uh, Sean and Craig, thanks very much for coming on the Cube and sharing with us a little bit about the announcement. Look for coverage uh, on Wikibon.org. We'll be covering this announcement like uh, like a blanket, as we always do. And uh, good luck with it. Right on. All right. Thanks, Dave.